Thank you for joining us again at Revelation Corner, where we have wonderful conversations with our senior pastor, Reverend Daniel Jenkins. So pastor, we've been talking about the kingdom family and um, this week we are focusing on parenting. And you've said something that I, I find very interesting. I think people would love to learn more about mm -hmm. this, that anyone can have children. Yes. Anyone can have yes. kids. I mean, couples come together and have kids all the time. Mm -hmm. But what does it take to be a kingdom parent? When we are talking about the kingdom family, that we are talking about a man and a woman, husband and a wife who know Christ as Savior, who get married uh, in every sense of the word. What I mean is that they have married to fulfill all the demands of marriage. And uh, God has been good to them to have children. And they seek to raise their children uh, with the principles of the kingdom of God. Uh, that means that their focus in how they build their children is based on what God says, not just what they feel. That's the way I see a kingdom family to be. I see. So what would you say is the current state of affairs uh, in terms of kingdom parenting? Uh, I, I believe that it is, it, is, it is all right to be a kingdom person uh, and to be married uh, well mm -hmm. and to have children. But I believe that it takes just more than being there as a father and a mother mm -hmm. to fit into God's ideals. Mm -hmm. What uh, the state of affairs is that there are many people, even in the kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, who have not uh, studied to know of God's desires and intents for them. For instance, the Bible makes it very, very clear that children are a gift of God, God's heritage. Now that means that the, the parents uh, uh, in the kingdom do not just see children as their own. They, they have them because God entrusted uh, the children into their care. And that means that they are going to seek God's guidance through his word uh, in order to raise up their children in the way of the Lord. That's the way I see it. See, So is it possible for a kingdom husband and a kingdom wife to come together um, and not be able to be effective kingdom parents? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is naturally, naturally, uh, many of us uh, have our own family backgrounds from where we come from. And people uh, have come from broken family uh, relationships where either father was not there or mother was not there. So all they know is what uh, they have been experiences from their childhood until they became adults mm -hmm. to be married mm -hmm. you know so such people might run into uh, the danger of being married they are kingdom people but because they have not taken time to know mm -hmm. the will of God and how to be an effective parent they will still have some shortfalls here and there. It could be that a man is there but sees the children uh, as the uh, or entrust the children completely uh, to the woman. Uh, they think that the woman is the one who must have absolute control over the children because he must nest them and do all kinds of things and not play a role. Mm -hmm. you know. But I believe that God's divine order uh, mm -hmm. for parenting is that it must be a joint effort. Mm -hmm. The father and the mother both are making a commitment to bring their children in the way of the Lord together. Mm -hmm. Together. It must not be one-sided. It is the man being there, mm -hmm. giving 
his wife the absolute support, wife giving husband absolute support, mm -hmm. so that their front is mm -hmm. completely solidified mm -hmm. and not broken. Mm -hmm. I believe parenting needs that, mm -hmm. where a man and his wife have the ideals, goals, and objects of what they want to make out of the family they are trying to raise. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. I see. So it sounds like practically yes. the, 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 the parents mm -hmm. have to be involved in helping the children understand God's word. Yes. And teaching them yes. God's ways. Yes. And, you and, 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 and you see that very clearly in the word of God. Mm. You know, God comes to uh, his people mm -hmm. who were transitioning into the promised land mm -hmm. and wants them to have a fresh start, a new beginning, mm -hmm. and sees it as a very important uh, aspect of the Exodus to prepare, uh, to let them know how they can uh, parent their children so they don't lose their focus on God. Mm -hmm. So God comes to them and teach them that, look, take my word, impart my word, teach your children. Mm -hmm. Whilst they sit, whilst you are walking with them, write them on your doorpost, write them even on their hands mm -hmm. and on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. So God is trying to paint a picture that, mm -hmm. hey, if you are going to raise my children, it must be according to my standards, not your standards. Mm -hmm. Because our standards mm -hmm. uh, can have some really shaky grounds, mm -hmm. you know, but God's standards are supreme. And they, they, they excel. They will help you to excel. Mm -hmm. The word of God is always uh, a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Mm -hmm. So uh, God wants parenting not to be kind of an ad hoc thing. It must be precise. Mm -hmm. Two people who know what God expects of them because they see mm -hmm. children as God's given, and you need uh, you need a lot of grace, God's mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, to know how to parent uh, children. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Pastor, what do you see as some of the challenges oh, and, and difficulties yes. of, of, of kingdom parenting? <laughs> oh, uh, there are there are many sides of looking at it, but I believe that the greatest challenge God ever entrusted man with is how to parent a child mm -hmm. from the infantile stages mm -hmm. until the person becomes an adult mm -hmm. and be able to become somebody who is going to uh, live to fulfill his mission on earth. That's a difficult thing. That's a difficult thing. Uh, you, if you look at the scriptures, right with the first family, you find Cain and Abel, who were two different people who had the issue of sibling rivalry. And that was not the making of their parents. Uh, they were two people from the same stock, but they were two different people in their outlook. Mm -hmm. You know, and how they related to God. As for Abel, saw that everything he ever earned belonged to God. Cain was not like that. He was self-seeking, self-centered, and all that. And so the first couple, scuffle on earth, which resulted in murder, happened in a family. And it, 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 it continues because the children God gives to us uh, most of the time are all different. Mm -hmm. they are, they, they are, you might, can have children, let them go through the same school, even do the same courses, and their goals and ideals in life are completely different. They have their, their attitudes uh, towards the things of God and so on are different. Uh, you come to Abraham's home, and you find sibling rivalry, mm -hmm. where Ishmael, and uh, Isaac also got into a scuffle, resulting in Hagar being sent away with Ishmael. Mm -hmm. The issue that exists right now in the Middle East, partially, is because it started in the home of Abraham. Uh, both of them had come from the same stock, the same parenting, uh, or not the same stock because they all be were linked to Abraham. But uh, 
uh, there were other things that came in which brought a scuffle. Um, the other uh, thing I want to talk about is what happened with Isaac mm -hmm. and his own children. Mm. They, they were twins. Mm. What are they? Esau mm -hmm. and Jacob. Jacob yeah. The way they were even born mm. was different. Mm -hmm. Now you find two parents who were divided in the way they connected with their own children. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca loved uh, Jacob, whilst Isaac loved Esau for what both of them contributed to their well-being or made them happy. Mm -hmm. uh, you you find out that uh, Jacob, by the very essence of his name, was a twister mm -hmm. who deceived his brother and took all his blessings mm -hmm. because his mother influenced him. These are things that uh, are there in scripture to let us know that it is even possible for us to be in the kingdom and uh, be disconnected with the children or disconnected with what God's will is concerning the children he gives to us so that uh, though we may have our own interest in our children yet we present a very formidable strong front in developing them whoever they are, they, they might be, mm -hmm. in the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And imparting to them the values that they, they need, the, 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 the knowledge of God which they, they need in order to stay balanced and to be able to live in so, human society without any offense. Mm -hmm. um, you, you look at Jacob. Mm -hmm. J J Jacob and his family. Mm -hmm. Very interesting uh, story is about when they are uh, the only daughter of Jacob was defied in Shechem mm -hmm. by, the, by the crown prince. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jacob's children got so furious. Mm -hmm. The end story of the matter was that they were so angry to kill mm -hmm. all the men. Mm -hmm. Everybody who is a male person in Shechem, they killed all of them. Mm -hmm. And Jacob was broken. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have children who <laughs> uh, are different people from you. Yeah. They are your children, but the heart that runs through them is not yours. Right, right. And uh, if parents have ever had uh, to contend with uh, children, it is because they, they are value system is so different from theirs. Mm. That is what you see with uh, 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 Jacob. Jacob had forgotten mm. that he deceived his own brother right. and his children deceived the men mm. in Shechem mm -hmm. into circumcising all of them mm -hmm. and got them in a very vulnerable state so they could not fight back mm. and killed all of them. Wow. You know, you ca I can go on and on in scriptures and, and you come to David. David, mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't like David? <laughs> and David had the most handsome of all his children, Absalom. Mm -hmm. And uh, Absalom was a different breed. Mm -hmm. You know, the man who was able to stage a coup against his own father mm -hmm. and run him out mm -hmm. of the palace mm -hmm. and in the process killed himself. Wow. And yet his father still worked for him. Wow. These are the things we have to contend with. And that mm -hmm. makes it crucial mm -hmm. for us to understand that it will take the grace of God and prayer mm. and his wisdom to be able to handle the children we have. Right. Because sometimes you will do everything, make all the inputs and still have some very, very, very strange mm -hmm. uh, characters to deal with in your own family. Right, right. And, and as, you know, a church, Revelation Temple, we yes. believe that God's uh, where it has so much revelation yes. that we can take and apply to our lives yes. in every area yes. of our lives, including yes. parenting. Yes. So what would you say are some of the key principles yes. that can help uh, parents to become uh, <laughs> kingdom parents? Thank you very much. <laughs> that is crucial. The principles really matter mm -hmm. because God has ordained in his word principles mm -hmm. that makes anything work. I believe Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, where the Bible said, in the beginning, God, mm -hmm. in the beginning, God. I believe that constructive and effective parenting mm -hmm. is focused on God. 
the principles or the God factor in the family is crucial. Mm -hmm. I believe that a man must start even praying for his child mm -hmm. the moment his wife tells uh, him mm -hmm. that I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. It must be the beginning point mm -hmm. of connecting that baby with God, mm -hmm. laying hands on your wife and praying mm -hmm. so that the hand of God will be with the child. Mm -hmm. But I believe that as the child is born and as the child grows, the word of God comes so handy to all of us that train. Mm -hmm. Children need training. Mm -hmm. Children are given to us a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Now, what becomes of them is the kind of foundation mm -hmm. you give to a child. Mm. You give to a child. I've spoken at length about great people in the word of God who did the best they could and still had. A example, again, is that of Samuel. Mm -hmm. I mean, his children grew up to be associate pastors, You're the, the, the junior pastor of the church, but who did their own stuff, mm. you know, and grieved the heart of God. It's as a result, the Israelite nation cried for a king. You know, so we are dealing with human beings and human beings are complex. Mm -hmm. It is only God, you know, who understands that the Bible says that the heart of man mm -hmm. is desperately wicked above all things. Mm -hmm. It is only God. It is only God mm -hmm. who has the ability and the capacity to change mm -hmm. a man's heart. Mm -hmm. So I believe that our connection must be the with God must be the first principle mm -hmm. that both husband and wife will consult with God, mm -hmm. will know God's mind for his children. And if they do, God is ready. I believe that your personal character mm -hmm. must become the standard mm -hmm. for which your children want to follow. Because that you are the one they see. Mm -hmm. You are the one they see. And the first principle after the God factor is developing such a strong love mm. for the children God give you. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not automatic that because a child is your child, you will love that child passionately. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't follow that way. Uh, 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 there, there are times when because of a particular child's character, mm -hmm. a parent may not like the child. Mm -hmm. Uh, because he might not be even smart in school, you know. There are many factors that come up, but children deserve mm -hmm. unqualified love, mm -hmm. agape love mm -hmm. from their parents. It does not matter what their beginnings might be. And sometimes we can even have kids who uh, are given to us with all various physical, you know, abnormalities, etc. Mm -hmm. And they still deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. So they deserve love. They deserve training. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be directed. Mm -hmm. They deserve an emotional support. Mm -hmm. These are all principles that a parent may take time to institute them. I believe that the, the parent must be able to uh, be so idealistic to let his children mm -hmm. know the things that the boundaries within which mm -hmm. they conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. That a parent must not think mm -hmm. that they are too strict mm -hmm. or too disciplined mm -hmm. to let the children know what they want from what they don't want. Right. Those parameters must be so clear to mm -hmm. children. Right. Children want to follow mm -hmm. and, uh, and to be able to come to the place where they respect uh, or the values of their parents is crucial. Mm -hmm. I believe that the way we do this practically mm -hmm. is praying with them, mm -hmm. making children part of the prayer mm -hmm. front of the chair, of, of the of the home. Mm -hmm. That a father makes and mother makes time to pray with their children, mm -hmm. even when it comes to their own personal needs mm -hmm. uh, or the needs of the families. Mm -hmm. Make the children uh, aware and be part of the praying mm -hmm. so that when God answers them, uh, they tell them, they share with them, we mm -hmm. prayed about this, God has answered it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do that, you are building that kind of a standard of faith mm -hmm. in your children for them one day when they have become of age to want to believe God because they can remember. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that is what accounts for God saying that teach the children the way they should go and when they are grown mm -hmm. they will never we must be able to teach them the word of god mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Teach them to know that the principle of obedience to parents mm -hmm. is not optional. It is God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, but I also believe above what I've said is the other factor where parents mm -hmm. do not only institute these principles, but also respect the child. Mm -hmm. You have to respect a child mm -hmm. to do the best you have for him, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. They can do things that can really grieve your heart and do all of that, but they deserve mm -hmm. that unqualified respect from their parents. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've said a little. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I can imagine a, um, you know, a parent out there listening to this conversation and yes. saying, hmm, taking a deep breath and mm -hmm. saying, I have you know, treated my, my child with great respect, mm -hmm. with love. Mm -hmm. I've inculcated the principles of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. We've prayed together. Yes. But it seems as though no matter how hard I try, yes. my child is going their mm -hmm. own way, mm -hmm. and it seems like I'm losing them. Yes. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, because uh, that, that is a real question. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I will take the example of Abraham, mm -hmm. who waited for 25 years before he had his child. Mm -hmm. And when God will require of him to sacrifice his son, mm -hmm. didn't have any argument with God. Didn't say, God, I've waited for so long to have this child. So, uh, if you gave him to me, <laughs> I can't give him back. But uh, Abraham took his child to Mount Moriah mm -hmm. and uh, got the child prepared to sacrifice. In fact, by principle, mm -hmm. Abraham sacrificed the son. Mm -hmm. It was God himself who stopped him mm -hmm. and said, look, there is a ram caught in the ticket for you. Mm -hmm. you know, because Abraham himself made a statement of faith. Mm -hmm. When his son, Isaac, mm -hmm. required of him that, hey, father, we have seen the fire, we have seen the wood, mm -hmm. but where is the lamp? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. the lamp was nowhere. Mm -hmm. He said that God will provide. Yeah. God certainly provided. Mm -hmm. There is a spiritual rule mm -hmm. and uh, that I want to talk about. You know, parenting mm -hmm. constitutes a lot of faith mm -hmm. and positive declarations. Mm -hmm. What children hear you speak will have an effect on them. Mm -hmm. uh, but primarily, I'm citing the example of Abraham because Abraham gave his child mm -hmm. to the Lord. Right. And we must understand that when I talk about this, it's not as simple as just handing over. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is saying, God, you gave this child to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you made it. Mm -hmm. I'm only just a conduit, mm -hmm. and I'm trusting you mm -hmm. to keep this child you gave me. Mm -hmm. That's the, that, that, that is how Hannah also did it. You know, uh, Hannah, after she has also been waiting for a long time and endured all the ridicule, and when God had given her a son, mm -hmm. said, actually, she made a promise to God that if you gave me a son, mm -hmm. I will give that child back to you. Mm -hmm. And when God had fulfilled his promise, send a child, after winning the child, send uh, 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 him to the house of the Lord and left the child there. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that parents, mm -hmm. it does not matter how loving we are mm -hmm. uh, and or uh, what we want to, the inputs we want to do, we have to understand that we will have to daily, mm -hmm. daily know how to make positive proclamations over them, declare things, because many people in this process have not declared wise things. Mm -hmm. They have cursed them. Mm -hmm. And when a father or mother curses the child, those things come to pass. Mm -hmm. They have an effect. But parents must take their child take time to properly dedicate their children. Mm. You know, it must begin from when a child is born and is dedicated. Mm -hmm. In my church, I will tell them, mm -hmm. and you are aware, mm -hmm. I tell the parents that, look, this is a trust 
God has given to you. You will account for this child. And so you are going to create an atmosphere of love for this child under which she can grow to become, you know, uh, somebody who will be constructive and who will fulfill his mission. Mm -hmm. So I believe that giving our children to God mm -hmm. and allowing him to have his way, that means that you are not going to determine who the child is going to become. You are consulting with God every step of the way right. so that when it becomes difficult, you ask God for grace. Grace is important <laughs> in parenting, I trust. Uh, so maybe this will be also helpful. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much, Pastor. I believe these are incredible nuggets that will bless people out there, especially our viewers. Um, and as you have revealed... <laughs> We're going to be talking about single parenting That's right. next Sunday. That's right. So you definitely have to tune in on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Please join us. We are at Burtonsville, 15210 Dino Drive, Burtonsville, Maryland. And you can also follow our pastor, Revelation Pasta, um, on Instagram. And we have a channel on YouTube as well, Revelation Temple Church, Maryland. Thank you very much. Have a good one.